This will be a demonstration of the installation and the operation of the GMX 322 and the Gen 5 module. Both of those are going to install the same way so we can show you in this particular radio. This car here is a 2008 Tahoe Hybrid. Your installation on other types of applications is going to be the same, pretty much the same. Some other vehicles have a different type of trim around the radio, but the connections on the back are going to be very similar. Also on the Cadillac Escalade, again, it's a little bit different as far as taking the, uh, the bezel around and getting to the back of the screen to plug in the connections but they're going to be self-explanatory. The cables and connectors are keyed, so you can't put them in the wrong location. Make sure the radio is off before you begin the installation. And the radio can be pulled to reveal the connectors on the back side. Okay, to begin the installation, you want to become familiar with the parts that are included in your kit. Inside the envelope, it's going to be your actual module itself. And you're also going to have a harness. This contains factory connectors. You're just going to plug them into the back of the radio. And then you'll also have another wire in here. This is for an option if you want to be able to control a factory rear view camera. If you're adding one aftermarket, then this isn't necessary because you're already going to hook up to the wiring of the harness. But if you want to control the factory camera and turn it on while you're in drive or other gears, then this, this uh, wire is necessary. You're also going to receive your installation manual with instructions on how to operate it. Certainly you want to become familiar with this and read through it. Make sure you, you know all the ins and outs of how to put it in and also how you're going to control it once you're finished. Okay, now we're going to remove the connectors in the back of the radio. These are keyed, so they're going to fit only in one section of, of our harness. Plug the brown into the brown. And then right back into the factory location again. Really simple. There you go. So all you're basically doing is unplug in the connectors from the back of the radio, plug them into the back side of our harness, and then plug our harness back into the original location. If you're having difficulty plugging in a connector, make sure you're not trying to plug one into the wrong side or the wrong location, something like that, so they are keyed. We're going to spend a moment and go over the wires that are included in the harness. This is for the GMX 322. There's a lot of extra connections included in this. This is to help you install a Bluetooth hands-free kit and also to install extra accessories and other things that you might want to use in your car. On the harness, you've got a blue wire here. This one's going to be for connecting to a, a rear view camera, or if, say, if you've already got a camera in your car, this is going to be a wire that, that you need to connect underneath the uh, passenger seat or in the back of the car if you want to control that rear view camera while you're in drive. Also, here you're going to get mute connections for a Bluetooth kit. You're going to get audio inputs for a Bluetooth kit. It's going to include accessory power that's going to turn on and off with the car. Also included in the harness is going to be a constant power source and a ground source. All these are to make it really, really easy to hook up extra accessories in your vehicle. These are not to be hooked into the vehicle wiring or, or tapped into anything that's already in the car. The GMX 322 and the Gen 5 are all plug and play, You're just going to plug them directly and you don't need any extra connections to make this work. These are just extra bonus pieces for you to use when you're connecting aftermarket things. Also included on the uh, harness is going to be another video connector. This is going to give you a separate video input that you can use for a, a backup camera or for a front camera. Okay, this is a helpful hint for uh, managing the wires. As you plug them into the back of the radio and you're putting the radio back into position, what you want to do is take on the, on the Tahoe versions like this, is you want to take that cable and run it back behind. There's a little bar underneath here I can show you. I'm going to point to it. Right here, this little bar that's just underneath the radio. Go ahead and go behind that and then come up underneath it and pull your cable out. And that gives you an easy connection to plug in the module itself. On the Escalades, it's pretty much the same fashion. You're going to have a little bar that's underneath the screen and radio, and you're going to run the cable behind that and then come up underneath it on the other side. And that tucks the connectors nicely behind the radio, makes it easy to put it back into location, 
and gives you a way to get to the module and then manage it after you've got it plugged in. I'm finished by plugging in the module. On the GMX322 you've also got extra connections that are on this module itself. These are going to be for audio and video inputs. The Gen 5 module doesn't include this. It's, it's say it's more of an override piece. The uh, GMX322 is a full multimedia piece with uh, audio and video inputs, two sets of them. Okay, after making your multimedia connections, whatever, you're just going to slide it underneath the radio. And then manage your wires when you're finished. After you've installed the interface and plugged in all the connectors, you want to give it a quick test before you reassemble the dash. We're going to go through the operation of this, and the uh, JMAX322 and the Gen5 are going to operate basically the same way. We're going to use the steering wheel controls on the mute button, and also on the door itself there's a window lockout button that we're going to press repeatedly to do the different functions of this. This differs from the GMX320 and the Gen4 models, so this is a new operation system. Okay, we're going to begin the demo by placing the vehicle into drive. This is a standard screen you would see when the uh, DVD play has been locked out. We're going to press the mute button on the steering wheel four times. You'll hear a beep, and that'll let you know that you were successful in your button presses. And then it'll switch over and show you the full DVD, and this will work while in motion. We can turn this function off by pressing the steering wheel button two times. You'll hear two beeps that'll let you know that you were successful in turning off the function. Another feature standard on the GMX322 and the Gen5 is the ability to input addresses while you're in motion. This also includes other features that might be blocked, including on-start dialing, uh, XM category scrolling, text, all these things that might be blocked while the vehicle is moving. The GMX322 and the Gen5 can allow that operation. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. If I was going to put in a, an address or something, push the destination screen, bring up address entry, whenever I'm moving, that's going to be blocked out. To enable what we're going to do is take the mute button on the steering wheel and press it just two times. You'll hear an audible beep that lets you know that you have you are successful and also the screen will open up and ungray so then you can go ahead and type in your address. If you want to shut that feature off and return back to regular ma active map tracking, we press the button two times again. And you hear two beeps. That lets you know that you were successful in turning off the unlocking process. That differs from when you're putting in your or reviewing DVDs while in motion. You're going to press the mute button four times to allow that, and then two times to turn it back off. For you know navigation and XM scrolling things like that, you just press it two times to turn it on, two times to turn it back off again. So there's two separate functions built into the mute switch. Now we're going to demonstrate the multimedia functions built into the GMX322. To begin with, we're going to place the radio on XM. Whenever you're on XM and you activate the multimedia functions of the GMX322, it's going to bring in whatever you've got plugged into the audio and video inputs directly on the box. Right now we have an iPhone plugged in, it's playing a video right now, we can demonstrate how that works. We've got the sound playing from the XM right now. We're just simply going to press the, the window lockout button four times. When we do that, it's going to automatically switch on our video input and give us the sound from our movie that's playing. This will operate while in motion. Easy to also turn it back off again. Press the window lockout button four times or more. There we go. That'll switch us right back over to XM with the sound from XM. I'm going to go through this again. Go ahead and press the window lockout four times. And bring us back to our movie. We can demonstrate that you can also turn that off by pressing the mute button on the steering wheel two times. The mute button on the steering wheel pressed two times will always turn off any function that's active at the time. Also, the GMX322 has two separate multimedia inputs. Right now, we're hooked up to a video source one and audio source left and right for one. You can also switch over and, and connect a different device to it. And this will be hooked up to the source number two. Just hit the back button on your radio. That accesses that function. Right now, we have nothing plugged in, so it's waiting for us. We can easily switch back and forth between you know, source one and source two. The multimedia functions are active whenever you're in the XM mode. If you switch over to any other mode on the radio and then press the window lockout button four times, 
that's going to access camera functions. So if you've got a, a rear view camera and you want to see a rear view camera while you're in motion or you want to uh, view the factory camera, that's a process you go through. Just put it on any other source other than XM, press the window lockout button four times and you're ready to go. After you're finished routing your wires and such and you're going to reassemble the dash, also included in your instructions are going to be uh, details on how to hook up multiple cameras. The GMX322 will support left and right turn signal cameras, also front camera operation manually and automatically. You can have it where it will automatically turn on whenever you reach low speeds below uh, 8 miles per hour. That's very helpful when you're parking, coming up to those uh, curbs in the shopping centers or pulling into your garage. When you reassemble, make sure you put that middle piece in first, you know, after you put the radio in, put that middle piece in and then the bottom part. Okay, all the screws in place, you're just going to snap the panel back on. And your installation is complete. Enjoy your lockpick.